I uh, first got into the Telecaster back uh, probably in 1973 or something like that. Um, I My first really good guitar was a Gibson SG Les Paul, which I still have. I love the sound of it, but I was hearing these brighter sounds on records, um, and I realized that they were Fender guitars, so I went looking for really either a Strat or a Tele at that time, and I uh, came across a Telecaster, a it said with custom finish for $150 in the local uh, paper. Uh, and I went down to look at it, and it was indeed a pink Paisley Telecaster, which at that time was not particularly uh, popular. It hadn't become vintage yet, but it was a real Fender, and it was affordable. So I got that, and, it, and I, I loved it immediately. It was so different from my Gibson. Um, and... Uh, as I played longer and longer, I ended up just gravitating toward the Telecaster more and more often. Uh, especially, I came across a 53 Tele, and I realized that it, the beefy sound of that could do almost anything. You know, you could get this uh, kind of twangy back pickup sound. <laughs> Or you can get kind of a jazzy front pickup sound. And the middle position is great for just regular rock rhythm, you know. pickup is great for blues as well. So I just ended up really playing a Telecaster probably, you know, a good percentage of the time. And, uh, they're just great all-around guitars. You can hit somebody over the head in a club with them. They'll stay in tune. Uh, in fact, uh, at the end of one of my songs, I have in the habit of throwing the guitar up in the air. And in one festival in, uh, in Italy, I actually was borrowing somebody else's guitar. And I, I threw the guitar up, and, and it was a marquee that had a curved top on it. And if the guitar hit the top and angled over in another direction and just slammed on the floor. I picked it up, not even a scratch, dent, nothing. Still in tune, basically. <laughs> so uh, they're, they're definitely a working man's guitar. Uh, so if you're just getting into country guitar, uh, pedal steel guitar is actually a, a really important component, but oftentimes there's no pedal steel in the band. So the guitar player has to do some of the pedal steel licks, and they usually require bending one note and holding another one stationary. So probably, uh, you know, one of the easiest or one of the first ones to do is uh, say you're playing the key of E. You move up to the 12th fret. So. And that's just uh, bending up a whole step. You can also do it here. Which, uh, that's the kind of stuff my old friend in the Helicasters, Jerry Donahue, did a lot of. Um, you can also just grab two notes in the middle of the guitar on the same fret. And if you bend them together, the, the bottom one will go up in a whole step, and the top one will go up just a half step. So you 
get that move. And uh, another thing, you know, there's a lot of kind of rhythm patterns. problem doing that kind of stuff because I've broke this nail and uh, usually I'll do it with, with fingernails but uh, I don't have any don't have any nail on that thing so. Another nice thing you can do uh, is uh, kind of scale patterns that have notes that ring together. And so your, your left hand is going to be in unusual positions. And here's one in E. Oh, you're starting on sliding up to the G sharp and playing the F sharp. Um, seventh fret on the B string and then you get an open E again and then you play D sharp on the B string and uh, and C sharp on the G string so and you try to let the notes ring as long as possible You can also do a G scale, same way. Start on G, and then you're gonna spread <laughs> wide, you know, wide spread with your fingers here. So you're gonna have to use your little finger, but playing G on the third fret, and then F sharp on the fifth fret, uh, seventh fret, sorry. And again, E open E, and then and then you play D C. Uh, D on the B string, C on the G string. And the idea is to use your open strings as much as possible in the scale, so you get a sound like... So it's just basically a G scale, but it's a nice sound. And uh, then you can mix, mix those kind of things up. And that's uh, incorporating some finger picking in it as well. Uh, Hammer-ons are always a good thing. And you can do uh, some patterns where uh, you're just moving up, kind of up an A chord. The first one uh, is like a seven. So you hammer on. Hammer on the fifth and seventh fret. And then uh, jump up to the fifth, fifth fret on the D string. So slowly. And so. So you're hammering every time. change the first two are whole steps and then this is a half step and then a whole step you can move it all around and uh, have a good time